Lights Out. One of those individuals who doesn't carry a watch makes a habit of asking someone else for the time. Pay particular attention if the timepiece happens to be on his wrist. And if he starts to tap that watch slowly, don't wait around. Lights out. Come on, Socrates. Breakfast is ready. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, Mike, ever since you've been on this case, all you do is talk, talk, talk. I can't get a word in edgewise. Sorry. I've been thinking. Yeah, but you have to think so much. I'd like to have a conversation with you. You know, maybe every month or so. I'll try to do better. <laughs> Good. And why can't you stop this pacing back and forth? Here's why. Five more missing. Researcher, trained nurse, professor, secretary, college athlete are latest to disappear. Five more. Well, guess we'll be hearing from the chief again. I'm surprised he hasn't called up already. Oh, look, Mike. You're a good detective. You know your business and, and you're doing your best. Now stop worrying or you'll wind up with a peptic ulcer. I'm not worrying. I'd just like to take a little direct action. Well, you've only been on the case four months. Sounds different when the chief says it. Well, he ought to know. You're just waiting for some kind of a break. A break? Yeah. If I don't get a break soon, there'll be nobody left in this city. Well, that's one way of closing the case. Now, come on and eat. I'm not hungry, Joyce. You know what's wrong with the city? Mm -hmm. Several things I can think of. A detective doesn't get a fair shake. Three million people in the metropolitan area. Well, it isn't exactly cozy, is it? Here, the odds are three million to one. Three million to one. And I'll find a certain fat guy with a certain wristwatch. Who? A fat man who wears... There's the teeth now. Well, you tell you old, the old buzzard that your wife at least has implicit faith in your ability to solve the case. Hello, Wilson speaking. Wilson, this is Dugan. Yeah, I know. Hello, Chief. <laughs> you see what's happened? Yeah. Five more. Well, have you got any leads? Not a thing. Listen, Wilson, you've been on this case four months now. I know, Chief, I know. That citizen committee's going to be back in today for sure. I got four filing cases full of complaints, and the progress file is empty. My job's at stake, Wilson, and so is yours. So are the lives of some of the best citizens in this city. All right, but you better turn up something pretty quick. Why tell him you haven't got anything? Because, baby, what I've got is so weird, no one would believe it. Well, I love you even if no one else does. I'll believe you. That's sweet of you, George. Oh, but... come on now, Mike. Spill it. For four months, I've been interviewing the families of all the people who've disappeared. 246 in all. And nearly everyone mentioned that the people who disappeared hadn't dreamed the night before. They all dreamed that a certain fat man with a crazy kind of wristwatch appeared and told about a country called Illyria. A man always wanted them to go there. The next day, they'd be wiped off the face of the earth. Well, what's the watch got to do with it? What's anything got to do with it? The main thing is that everyone who's had that dream has disappeared. And you can't tell the chief that? You'd think I was nuts. Well, I see your point. A little early for visitors. I'll get it. All right. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Madden, come in. Oh, 
Well, you remembered. Sure, Western Avenue. Four weeks ago, three o'clock in the morning, we talked in the street. Your son Donald had just disappeared. Yes, 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 I know. Oh, uh, Joyce, uh, may I present Mr. Madden, my wife. How do you do? Mr. Wilson, you remember the dream that my son Donald had? Well, just now, at breakfast, my daughter Joan told the same story. She had the dream, Mr. Wilson. She had the dream. Ha! Ah, she had. Will she go too? Will she? I'll take it easy, Mr. Madden. I don't want to scare her, but I could tell her to stay home today. No, don't do that. Let her go ahead right as if nothing had happened. Well, she's going skating. Where? At a rink at uh, 23rd and Clifton. We'll take care of it, Mr. Madden. Don't worry. We'll see that she's protected. All right, I'll, I'll try not to. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Madden, you happen to have a picture of Joan in your wallet? Oh, yes, yes. Let me have it, please. There she is. Thanks. She's such a nice girl. We can't lose her, too, Mr. Wilson. Don't worry, Mr. Madden. Everything will be all right. Poor little guy. Mike, you've got to pick that girl up for safekeeping. Not that simple, Joyce. That fat man wants to take Joan Madden. Nobody can stop him. One guy disappeared right out of the elevator between the 10th and 15th floor. Another guy was driving along the highway alone. Car crashed. He was gone. No. The main thing is finding that fat man. Now, this may be the break we've been talking about. He's planning another disappearance. I'm going to be there. Hello, Chief. I've got something. I want you to surround the roller drome at 23rd and Clifton. Enough men to lock arms around the block. Yeah, there's going to be another disappearance. Right. Meet you at the door. Now, take it easy, Mr. Detective. Remember, this fat man is only in a dream. That's why I've been pacing up and down so much, baby. This is the kind of thing that makes a man wonder. you find those? In the center of the floor. I'm taking them in lost and found. Mind if I join you, mister? Not at all, Mr. Wilson. I take it you'd like to have a little direct action. I got a couple of direct questions, and I got a feeling you got the answers. Mm, you're probably embarrassed that you don't know my name. Let me introduce myself. Ludovic Altimus, at your service. Pleasure to meet you. You mean it's a pleasure to catch up with me, don't you? That's more accurate. You made a mistake, Mr. Altimus, taking two people from the same family. Oh, that's for me to judge. Matter of fact, I never made a mistake in my life. There's always a first time. Oh, not at all. A man can go right through a busy life. Okay, never mind the philosophy. Now, what's the dope with this dream business? Everyone claims that they saw you in their dreams. That's right. I go and talk to them in their dreams. That way, no one can follow me. May I ask how you get into their dreams? Well, it's quite simple. This little instrument here on my wrist 
can transmit matter, can transmit it into any frame of mind or any part of the uh, universe. I call it a transmatter. As a matter of fact, I use it to uh, transfer the people too, you see. By tapping it in a certain way, I can put their personal magnetic vibrations into synchronization with uh, certain light rays and presto, they're on their way. On their way to where? To Illyria, of course. Where's Illyria? I think we've had enough questions for the moment, my boy. Let me tell you something for your own good. I'm in complete control of the situation and you've got to give up this case. You've been snooping around too long, and I can hurt you. You're not that impressive, Altimus. I'm sticking around. In that case, I shall leave. You won't move until I'm through questioning you. Oh, Wilson. Are you planning to have me execute one of those ridiculous uh, dashes for it? Hey, it's your choice. Doors are covered. <laughs> Chief! Chief, stop him! What's the matter? Don't let him get away! Don't let who get away? The fat man who sat at the table with me! Mike, there was nobody there at that table with you. Come on, let me go. You were sitting at that table all alone and talking. I was sitting with Ludovic Alton, the big fat guy! You're dreaming, Wilson. You're dreaming. I've seen this happen before, Wilson. There's nothing like a good long rest to clear up a man's head. Chief, my head is clear for the 600. Where's your wife? She's down at her office. Oh, I wanted to talk to her. I want her to see if she stayed in bed. And I'm going to call a doctor, too. Look, Chief, I'm perfectly okay. I'm not crazy. This is the same guy who appeared in all these people's dreams. The same guy who snatched Joan Madden right off that floor by tapping his watch. Look, Mike, I've been in this business. Are you group. sure there's nobody in the wanted file by the name of Ludovic Altamus? I know that wanted file by heart. The closest name is uh, Joe Altamont. Besides, everybody in that file is a living human being. Hey, there's something wrong in the apartment. Yes, yeah, sure there is. The door. The kitchen door. We've lived here for two years. We've never had that door closed. Chief. Wilson, just what are you running here? I'm not running anything. Lodovic Altimus is. All right, I'll go along with you now. I'll even agree he exists. But just how do we find him? I believe in a little direct action in times like these. Start with a phone book. Well, let's see. A L A L T. Here he is. Ludovic Altimus. 798 East 96th. He lists himself as an exporter. Well, is that all right? I'm going up there. Now, we're surrounded, please. No, what good would it do if the cops can't see the criminal? I'm going up there by myself. And just what are you going to do with that hammer? Another part of the direct approach. I'm sure you'll love everything about it, Lydia, my dear. Well, it's of a magnificence beyond description. I can hardly wait to go, Lydia. And uh, don't worry about your husband. We can fix it so that you'll forget all about him. Funny. He's beginning to seem hazy already. Fine, fine. If you'll just rest up for the trip, I'll call you a little later. I'll wait for your call, Lady. Why, hello, Mr. Wilson. Come in. I wasn't quite through with you. I'm glad that you're here. I'm not quite through with you either. Come in. Will you, uh, will you have a glass of milk? No, thanks. Uh, incidentally, 
If you haven't been home yet, I must warn you. If you have, I must uh, congratulate you. Congratulate me, then. It didn't work. We never leave the kitchen door closed. Uh, I told them not to do it. I guaranteed that uh, you would give up the case before it was necessary to kill you. That was considerate. Yes, I can't bear these blunt methods. Do sit down. I'd much rather whirl gracefully around the edge of a problem than wade in like a rhinoceros. The nature of my assignment here requires it. What is the nature of your assignment? Oh, yes, I think I'd better give you a little background. You sure you won't have a, uh, a glass of milk? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I was born, although I was born in Morriswood, I uh, still have a very nice house there where I like to relax on summer evenings in the nice, warm, wide porch. I am really a creature from a totally different galaxy of the universe. And uh, although I was born in Northwood, I, uh, I, I appear to be, I'm a person who, who has had a great assignment and I had, my mother was born in Northwood, but my father was a member of the first spaceship expedition which landed in this planet from Illyria. I see. Have you ever been back in the old country? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, this, uh, this transmatter is my connection with New Jersey. But uh, I haven't transmitted myself recently. Do you mind if I pace? No, 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 please do. You see, the trip takes a few light years, and I never seem to have time to get away for more than a weekend in uh, Northwood. Why do you have to keep so busy? Well, you know why. My job here is to line up nice, healthy, young, and intelligent men and women to transmit from, your, from our planet to yours. Oh, what for? Well, for, uh, for the purpose, you see, we have a very advanced civilization in Illyria, but we have recently found that the birth rate has fallen off very considerably. Well, you see, the problem that we were, that we were faced with, we have to carry on just as you do. And so it was necessary to start these expeditions. We have uh, people to recruit from there. We have people from several planets now. It's rather like, uh, rather like America in the uh, 19th century. A sort of uh, melting pot, as you might say. But one difference. People wanted to come here. Oh, no, no, no. People want to go to Illyria, too. And when they get there, they find the life so delightful and the land so incredibly beautiful that they never want to return. That's ridiculous. Oh, no, that's what I like so much about you Earth people, especially you Americans. You are so blissfully provincial. You always think that everything that you have here, that nothing could be better. Well, I assure you that it can. Well, my point of view isn't that flexible. You really ought to broaden it, and I always said the police work did not broaden the imagination. Well, I've got enough imagination to put you out of business, Mr. Altimus. That's all I need. Uh, in any test of the survival of the fittest, Mr. Wilson, I can assure you that I am pretty fit. It'll you who will be out of business. Now, you didn't take my first warning. You didn't fall into the booby trap. Now, let's see what happens. Will you come in here, my dear? Here I am, Ludwig. John. You, uh, you know Mrs. Wilson, of course. Oh, hello there, Mike. How are you? Joyce! What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Uh, tell him what you want to do, Joyce. Well, I had this funny dream, and Ludovic came to me and asked me to go to Illyria. And now my dream is coming true. I'm going. You mean you want to go? Yes. Yes, I want to go. Well, we don't usually take married people, but I... She's just... drugged. You've got a drug. No, no, I really want to go, that's all. What about me? I don't know. What about you? Now, shall we all sit down? I want you to listen to me, and then I want your answer. I want you to go to your chief and tell him that you failed and that you're going to give up this case immediately. If you don't agree, then I shall tap this transmatter three times and your wife here will disappear forever. May I uh, 
Have your answer, please. Yes, you may have my answer. My answer. Then, then you win, Mr. Wilson. Mike? Take it easy, Charles. What are we doing, you? Where? Who's that big tub of lard? This is Ludovic Altimus. He was going to transmit you to a different planet. What? Yes, to Illyria. Well, that would have been just great. Great, I agree. You can imagine the size of the holes in your socks with me on another planet. <laughs> you, you've broken my contact with Illyria. And it was such a clever, mm. delicate instrument. Well, let's call the squad car and run well, it in. Not that easy, baby. You mean just because you smashed the evidence? Not only that. See, baby, the chief can't see this man. It's most embarrassing for me. But now, you see, uh, Mrs. Wilson, I have the power of selective invisibility. It will be very difficult to get me to appear in a court. But the most important thing, you won't be transmitting any more people. Uh, no. But in spite of our... Uh, Mutual dislike under the circumstances. I do want to congratulate you. Your direct action was very effective. Thanks a lot. Come on, Joyce. <laughs> Anyhow, I shall have time now for a little uh, gardening in Morriswood. If you're ever over that way, do look me up. No, we don't get to Morriswood very often. Oh, I'm sorry. It's very delightful over there. I'm sorry, too. And by the way, you better send somebody over to fix up our kitchen. I'll take care of that. For a while. But in case you don't run into him, let me give you the time. <laughs>